I'm out here in the garage tonight sorting wheel weights that I've collected. I wanted to show a little bit about um, the different types and how to distinguish some of them. There's three primary types you're going to run into, which is lead, steel, and zinc. With lead being banned in a lot of places now, we're getting a lot of mixed items here. This batch, this bucket here is mostly lead, fortunately. But a lot of the other stuff I've got um, has a lot of zinc and steel in it. So when I melt lead um, to clean it up, my furnace burns really, really hot because I use wood. So I'm trying to do some sorting here ahead of time. My method is I, I've laid, laid out a bucket on the table here on top of some cardboard so it's easier to paw through. And then what I do is I will take... I'll look through and I'll find things like these stick-on ones, these flat ones, and I'll just throw them in a pile out of the way to deal with later. You find other junk like um, nuts and bolts and other assorted things. And I've got some bins over here. I've got one for steel, one for zinc. This bin is stick-ons that have been confirmed to be lead. Um, and I've got some tools that I use. I've got here, this is just a big steel bolt with some nuts on the end. And I use that for um, testing. If you hit with lead, it makes a dull sound. If you hit with zinc or steel, it makes a ringing noise, so it's easy to distinguish. Here's the lead one. Steel and zinc. So that's a pretty easy way to tell. Um, as I'm picking them up I could just, I know that's lead, it goes in the bucket on the floor, steel, zinc. The steel and the zinc ones you can distinguish from each other. Um, the zinc ones are usually stamped with a Z or they look like they're cast but not painted. Um, so those go in the zinc bucket. The steel ones, on the other hand, uh, they are usually painted and they all look very similar. On the steel ones, the printing is usually stamped into it, like these numbers are stamped in, whereas on the zinc ones, the numbers are um, above the surface, like they were, they were put on when the unit was molded. Same with the lead. Most all of the lead ones, the printing on them is raised instead of recessed. So things can go pretty quickly here. Um, I can visually tell a lot of the lead ones and they go straight in the bucket and it goes pretty fast. But it's really simple just to tap it to confirm. If I run across anything that's questionable, you know, that one's lead. But if I'm wondering, I keep these around and what I can do is just you can see that it took a nice nick into it really easily, so I know that's lead. I also keep a magnet handy. It's easier with some of the stick-ons. That one's um, either lead or zinc. And I can confirm it's lead by just testing it here, which it is lead. So it'll go in there. But that's why I take a lot of the stick-ons and just throw them in a pile so I can deal with them after the fact. Use the magnet to sort out the the steel ones first and then check the others out pretty quickly. I know there's a lot of ways to do this easier. Um, you can of course control your temperatures since the lead melts in the 600 degree um, zone and the um, zinc melts in the high 700s. The steel will of course not melt anywhere near either of those temperatures. So somebody who can control their, temp their melt temperatures uh, pretty well can keep the temperatures in the 700 range and the lead will melt and the zinc and the steel and all the clips will float to the top and you can skim them all off. That's pretty simple. Uh, this doesn't take long for me to sort these. It goes pretty fast so I don't mind doing it. I'm going to get a thermometer see how well I can control my temperatures on my wood burning melter. Uh, maybe that'll work out uh, for now. I'm sorting. Of course, when I'm done, I'll have my zinc in one uh, place and my steel in another. And I should have quite a bit of it the way things look like, so I can probably take those to a scrapyard 
and get some money for the zinc and uh, you know that any little bit counts so whatever I can get can either go towards lead or towards something else instead of in the garbage so let's do some sorting oh, that one That one is steel. 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 You can tell some of them just by looking. Sometimes the lead ones will make a funny noise and you just want to double check them. Yeah. Just to be safe, you don't want to get any zinc in there because if you get any zinc melted in, supposedly it'll cause quite a bit of problems. So I want to be really careful about what I do here. So I've quickly sorted quite a pile here, so you can drop that in the bucket. I try to not throw them in the bucket right away. I make a little pile off to the side. That way if I think I made a mistake, I don't have to go digging through the bucket to get it out. Most of your zinc weights are actually labeled with a Z on them somewhere. Um, this one says Reg Z. Other ones say ZN on them. And so visually distinguishing those is pretty easy. Sometimes you can just glance across the pile and pick those out. I have run across a few that kind of threw me off, and I've set them aside here. These, you know, by looking at them, I would have thought these were lead. Of course, the tap test tells me that they're not, and the magnet test tells me that they're not steel, so they are most likely zinc. They're not labeled at all other than the number on them that specifies the weight. And so what I've done is I actually set those aside so that I can glance at them to remember what they look like. That way as I'm going through here, it'll help me distinguish more of that type. Most of your steel weights um, will have some sort of label on them that specifies. Um, most of them say FE on them. Once in a while you'll find some that don't have any label. And the beauty about these is a simple magnet test will, t you know, will tell you that. The steel ones usually also have clips on them that are riveted. So that's a giveaway. And the ends are flat and the text is stamped into it instead of raised. So the steel ones are really easy to distinguish. And they're not that big of a deal if you miss them because they will just float to the top. There's really no chance of them melting into in with the lead. Otherwise, uh, your temperatures are way out, out of range and you've got other problems. Thank you for watching.